Hi everyone, I'm Chung Wen for Gotta Be Mobile, and in this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the LG G Flex, which is AT&T's first smartphone with a curved display or a flexible display underneath uh, the screen housing. So this is the AT&T G Flex. It takes a lot of its design cue from the LG flagship, the LG G2, which is also available on both AT&T and Verizon Wireless in the United States. And we've already covered the LG G2 review, so be sure to check that out. But essentially, with the G Flex, LG borrowed a lot of the design cues of the G2 instead of the G2's 5.2 inch diagonal full HD 1080p display. The G Flex actually uses a larger 6 inch panel with a slightly degraded resolution of 720p, so you're not going to get as crisp a display as on the LG G2. However, in normal viewing, uh, most users likely won't be able to tell the difference. So uh, the difference in display resolution is pretty negligible. The main thing about the G Flex is that the buttons, the, um, as found on the G2, have been moved away from the sides of the device, making it a very clean device um, without any hardware buttons around the sides or even on the front. So you have the on-screen uh, navigation keys for Android for your home menu and your back key. And now the buttons have been moved to the rear side of the smartphone. I'm going to go ahead and peel off this plastic sticker here. And you're going to see that on the rear here, you're going to have the power button as well as the volumes up and down key. Um, and there is also another sticker on the back to protect the buttons, which we're going to go ahead and go and remove. So now you have the volumes up and down and in the middle is the, uh, the power button here, which makes for a nice and interesting design element. LG says that when you're holding the phone up to your face and you're talking, uh, most people rest either the middle or their index finger um, where this button is naturally placed. So here you can actually toggle uh, call volumes pretty quickly without having to feel around the sides of the display to get at the button. And like the LG G2, you have a 13 megapixel camera here with optical image stabilization, which works pretty well in low light conditions. So essentially in low light, what that means is that you're going to, um, the camera's able to um, have the shutter open longer, which allows more light in. So your picture's going to look a lot brighter, even without having to use the uh, single LED flash here on the rear. So this is great for people who are going out to restaurants or bars or clubs and don't want to disturb those around them with a glaring LED flash uh, going off onto the side when they're taking a picture. And here, if you're in a pretty dimly lit place, you're going to still be able to see the pictures pretty good with the optical image stabilization without any motion blur because the shutter is kept open longer. Also, what's new is that LG has migrated from the G2, which has an infrared blaster port here at the top. Um, they've moved it now to the side on the opposite side of the camera lens from the LED flash. So here, along with the quick remote application, you're able to control your home entertainment system or um, any home entertainment uh, devices that have an infrared port. So this infrared blaster will send uh, programming so you can change the channel on your HDTV at home, for example. The device is cloaked in a very glossy uh, plastic here. It's a gray color and there are striations in the glossy plastic. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it makes for a similar texture as a brushed metal or brushed aluminum finish, although it is uh, plastic. You won't have access, for instance, to the battery or to uh, removable storage. So it comes with 32 gigs of onboard storage, but you won't be able to add a memory card, for example, uh, to expand your storage. You can rely on the cloud if you need to expand for storage options. There's a single um, SIM card slot here. So you do need a SIM ejector tool on the AT&T model to pop open the SIM card. And it does connect uh, pretty speedily to AT&T's 4G LTE network here in the US. And as you can see, uh, the screen, the curved angle of the screen makes it very comfortable to hold, especially when you're holding it to your uh, face or if you're a guy and you like wearing or putting your phone rather 
in the inside jacket pocket of a blazer like I do. This actually curves to your body and makes uh, for a more comfortable fit and feel rather than having just a large chunk or a six inch chunk of glass hugging your body without the curve. So this actually feels a lot better in your front jacket pocket as compared to the six inch at t Nokia Lumia 1520 which runs on the competing uh, Microsoft Windows Phone platform. So the beauty of this curved display actually is for when you're holding it in landscape mode as such and you're watching a movie like a YouTube video or even Google Play videos or TV shows. And when you're holding it like this and you're holding it and watching it, it makes for a very immersive uh, TV viewing experience. But again, it's on a six inch panel rather than a 60 inch uh, curved TV panel. So in likelihood, you're not gonna notice that much of a difference. Where you will notice the difference is in the rear uh, loud-facing uh, speaker here. So this is the rear-facing loudspeaker. And um, it does get pretty loud, but the nice thing about the LG speaker is that the audio uh, fidelity is actually quite high. So unlike the Beats audio with the boom sound speakers on the HTC One where you have the dual front-facing speakers, this one, you only have a single speaker on the back, but it is louder and it gets just as loud as the HTC One speaker. However, it's not bass heavy and it doesn't sound synthesized or mechanical like the HTC speaker. So you're going to have um, nicer mid ranges um, if you're a music listener. So um, for audiophiles, this is a great speaker that LG has implemented on the G Flex and also on the G2. So you're going to have the same speaker on both smartphones. Um, so this device runs on Android 4.2.2, so it's a Jelly Bean, it's not the latest 4.4 KitKat, um, and LG does have its own customization. The main thing that I love about the UI is that you can use it, unlike other smartphones such as those from Samsung, um, in landscape orientation, especially on the home screen, so if you're mounting this in a car or you're just a landscape user, it gives you nice access to the home screen in the proper orientation as you're holding it. Whereas other um, smartphones, you can use apps in landscape, but the home screen here would be locked to portrait orientation. In terms of multitasking, LG has three different ways that you can multitask, so this is quite a useful tablet for those who like to stay productive and handle and juggle simultaneous things while on the go. The first method we're going to cover is called Q-Slide, and you can just enable it or disable it using the widget control here on the Android uh, drop-down no notification panel. So with QSlide, essentially you can run um, multiple applications and it's similar to how Windows does applications in that you have floating windows that you can move around and of course resize to make it bigger or smaller. So here's one application. We're going to just go ahead and pull up several different applications just so that you get an idea of how QSlide works. So you have two applications running and let's go ahead and pull up the notepad. So actually you can only run two and a main window underneath. To get access to see all three, the two floating windows and the third window, essentially what you can do is you can adjust the transparency. So by making the top windows more transparent, you can actually see what's going on behind you. And here I'm adjusting what's going on in the background. So I'm adjusting the home screen carousel. And of course you can tap on the window and then go ahead and make your calculations. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close them out right now. So that's Q slide. The second method to multitask is similar to Samsung's multi-window view or on Windows 8 if you're snapping two Metro UI applications side by side. So to activate that, you're gonna hit and hold the back key on the on-screen Android navigation button. And essentially, let's go ahead and these are some of the installed applications that are compatible with this method of multitasking. So I'm going to open up my messaging app on the top and then on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and open the browser. So here we have two applications running side by side. So it's very similar to multi window view that we've covered previously. And of course, you can dedicate more window space to one application or the other and you can also flip them around. So this is the second method of multitasking and it allows you to run two applications simultaneously side by side. 
The only drawback between Q-Slide and the simultaneous window view is that only select number of applications. Not every application will work, although LG does give you um, a variety of first party applications that are pre-installed to choose from. So you do have, so not all applications that you download from uh, an app store like Google Play or Amazon App Store um, for Android will work with Q-Slide or the simultaneous windows. The second method is just um, is more expansive, so it will work with a number of applications. So any applications you've installed. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Isis Wallet, and it says I need a new SIM, so I can't do that. So let's open up the Notebook application, and then essentially, if you just use a three finger gesture and you swipe inwards from the right edge of the phone it's gonna just minimize the application and dock it. So it's kind of like docking the application to the task bar on Windows or just like minimizing it on um, Mac OS X. And then you can open um, another application. So I'm gonna open up Polaris Office and we're gonna skip the registration. And then again, we're gonna go ahead and minimize it. You can open up to three applications using this method. So I'm going to go ahead and open up, let's say, let's open up my AT&T. Go ahead and accept. And we're going to go ahead and minimize it. And then to recall the application in this uh, taskbar-like interface, all you would have to do is just swipe from the left edge here and it will pull up the applications that you've docked or minimized. So if I just go ahead and tap on the Polaris Office, it's gonna maximize that application. And if I do that again, it's gonna go ahead and give me options for the other applications. So this application, uh, so this method actually just minimizes the app so you can pull up another one and then you can juggle between the applications this way. So these are just some, some of the, these are just three of the most powerful multitasking features that LG has built into the LG UI, which is present both on the LG G2 and the newer LG G Flex smartphone. LG and AT&T had bundled also a number of other different applications. A quick theater application just pretty much gives you a nice UI to viewing your photos, your videos, and YouTube videos that you've taken. So it's just a nice carousel interface to allow you to view and scan for media content to take advantage of this immersive um, curved six inch display that we have. Another application that I just wanted to point out would be the, um, the family application. So this is Famigo, or it's called Famigo, and it's similar to the HTC Kids mode. So it allows you to just um, set a password and then give your phone to your child in their downtime or in your downtime so your child could be entertained, however restricting the applications that are available to your children so that they won't have access to your email or any other sensitive applications you have. So this is a nice way to give kids the power of a smartphone with the apps and the power of the internet without having the, or without giving them full access and full control in that manner. And then of course AT&T bundles a bunch of its own app including drive mode which limits the application when you're in a car so you're going to be less tempted to text and drive and just to create a safer driving environment. AT&T Locker gives you access to the cloud so you can store more applications um, in the cloud because um, it does have limited um, storage so it does give you wireless storage as well. So this is the LG G Flex. I'm Chung Wen for Gotta Be Mobile. Be sure to tune in to gottabemobile.com and check out our full review, our full written review with our thoughts, opinions, and our commentary of this smartphone. But this is a quick tour of the LG G Flex with the six inch display, which of course apes the 5.2 inch display of the flagship LG um, G2. Again, I'm Chung Wen for Gotta Be Mobile. Thanks for watching this video review of the LG G Flex for AT&T.